So you guys are telling me out there you love budget and value for money. And today we've got the ultimate AliExpress budget CPU cooler comparison, where we've got the original Snowman MT4. This is the OG that we tested out years ago. And this thing came in with just the best value for money you could get shipped worldwide for a CPU cooler. Now, years later, we'll pull up the first graph for you guys, the gaming results. The Snowman MT4 is still hammering it really hard. This is with an i7-13700K, by the way. So we're putting all these CPU coolers through the rafters to not only test their claims on the box, whether they can really support up to 160 watts, for example, in the case of this iGo 400 SE, but also testing out things like the noise levels and whether or not these CPU coolers have any other perks that you should be aware of. So let's get into the results here today. We've tested out not only one game that's a little bit lightweight, we've also tested out a heavyweight game and also some Cinebench R23 to give you an overall picture on which of these CPU coolers are the winners and which you should just avoid buying completely. Let's get straight into it. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes yeah City. And ever since we tested out the Snowman, the company has gone along and introduced Snowman. So there's more than just one of these original coolers. And in fact, they renamed this cooler from the Snowman CPU cooler to the Snowman MT4, which the four stands for four heat pipes. Now the one beside it is called the BM6000, and this has two fans attached to it from the get-go. It's a heavier weight. It's also got a different base plate and has a bolt-on mechanism rather than a clip-on mechanism versus the OG the Snowman MT4. However, there are some other cooling brands in today's comparison, so I'll put up the list for you where we've got the Lanshuo as well as the Igo Ice 400 SE, the Johnsbo CR1400, and also the Wavibo. I decided to get something that was a little bit aesthetically different to these other coolers here to see what you can get for your dollar in 2023. Now, the bottom line is, Four of these coolers, the ones that I got my hands on right now, they're going to be okay. I'm going to actually recommend all four of these after today's video. Two of these coolers are going to get the absolute no from me, and that being the Lanshuo and also the Ice 400 SE. And we'll pull up the two reasons why for you guys straight away with the benchmarks. And the first one is Returnal. Though why this benchmark is so important at these wattage settings is you can take a look at these numbers and then say, okay, what about a 5700X or what about an i5-13500? What's a good cooler for that CPU? And then you can say, well, the ICE 400, which I don't know why they named it this thing. They should call this the uh, overheating or the molten 400. It failed this test. It went up to 100 degrees. It was thermal throttling in what they say on the box was 160 watt TDP. So Igo really have a big failure on their hands here, but not only that, the mounting on this cooler was hideous to the point where the cooler wouldn't fit properly because it was uh, the latches on the bottom here were so long, there was hitting the chokes on the motherboard. And so I had to mount it diagonally even to get it to mount properly. And then the fan is also three pin, so it's not even four pin PWM, which for a cooler in 2023, that should be a definite to control the noise levels, especially when the CPU is on idle, for example. This thing's going to be just one fan speed the whole way through. So the ICE 400 SE, it gets a no-go, even though the price is the cheapest of today's coolers. It doesn't matter. It's just not going to be worth it from all these other benchmarks even going forward. It failed the most or the least strenuous benchmark that we put at it. Now, the land, sure, you can see in the numbers here that we got here today, the Lanshuo did pretty good in terms of its cooling performance. It was handling the i7-13700K absolutely fine, but where it started to break down for this CPU cooler was when we tested out the noise. And so we'll pull up the next graph for you guys here where we're going 
between these graphs just to paint all the pictures for these coolers, the Land Shuo had the most annoying whiny fan noise I'd ever heard. Mounting this thing was okay, it looked pretty good, the idling noise was okay, but as soon as you ramp these fans up, they sounded really annoying. And usually I can handle 48 decibels of noise. Usually noise is like, fine, you can kind of think of it like you're at the beach, and there's a bit of white noise, a bit of ocean noise. But this Land Shuo had that high pitch, whiny noise, the kind that you get when you get into an argument with the missus, which I can't even handle 10 minutes of that. How could I handle that if I'm gaming for hours on end? It would drive me absolutely mad. So these two coolers here, they had things that were just a big letdown for me personally. I wouldn't recommend them. And the reason why the cooling performance on, say, the Wavibo was also better than the Land Shuo, I'd put that down to the base plate as well. Where the four coolers left on the table here, they all had really good surfaces, the contact surfaces that contact between the cooler and your CPU. So if this is close to a mirror finish, for example, it means that the heat is going to be transferred better than say the Land Shuo, which has a very rough base. So that could have been letting it down in that it scored worse temperatures than a single fan Wavibo in the first gaming benchmark that we did here with Returnal. But looking at the other four coolers here compared to the water cooler, they all did a good job in their own right in that the MT4, the original snowman, did excellent considering the noise levels was the lowest of the bunch here in this whole comparison here today. But also the Johnsbo did a good job of keeping the noise down as well as the temperatures decent, but it came in with a smaller profile package than all the other coolers here today, except the Igo, which was a complete failure. The Wavibo, however, was a pass. And I do say this is a pass because the build quality is good. It's aesthetically, it's a nice looking CPU cooler. The idle noise is good. The temperatures are pretty good, but the fan does get a bit noisy once you start getting into some more heavy benchmarking, which in this case, we'll pull up the Cinebench R23 results here, where all these CPU coolers did only barely pass this test, except for the Johns Bell. It did hit 100 degrees, but it didn't throttle the CPU scores like the IGO did. For instance, the IGO was dropping down the CPU scores down to around 18,000. The rest of these were keeping it over 27,000 points. And now the Snowman, the BM6000, did start to shine a little bit here ahead of the other three coolers in that it was managing to keep the i7-13700K away from that 100 degree thermal throttling point. Now, we did test this in a 20C ambient environment here today. So the temperatures, say for instance, you go up five degrees or go up 10 degrees then all these coolers will start thermal throttling depending on your ambient temperatures so that's something to keep a little eye on with these coolers i mean testing out the i7 13700k with a 20 dollar cooler you're bound to get some limitations but i do like going into the deep end straight away so i can give you guys recommendations on which coolers are going to do the job for the vast majority of CPUs out there, instead of beating around the bush and saying, well, this CPU, it might be good for a higher end CPU when it actually won't be. And so here's where I've thrown in a 420 mil water cooler, pretty much the best you can get. And that's coming in with some lower temperatures than the other four models here today. But it is good to see that the $37 BM6000 is still doing a good job in this area of keeping the temperatures under control in Cinebench R23, which does go up in this case to around 200 watts on the B760 Steel Legend from ASRock. Though the last benchmark we are throwing up on the screen is the Horizon Zero Dawn numbers. And here is where we get a game that is actually quite CPU heavy. It loves to use up the CPU resources if it can. I found this does put quite a strain on the CPU. We're at points in this benchmark this can go over 180 watts in terms of power usage. So the i7-13700K can be a very power hungry CPU and you'll need a good cooler to cool that down. And here's where we've seen from the results here, we've got the BM6000 coming out ahead of the other air coolers, but the MT4 and the Wavibo were coming in close quarters with one another here and getting passable results. The CR1400 did hit 100 degrees, just like the Cinebench score. However, we will be looking at this Johnsbo CR1400 with say an i5-13500 in a future video, because the 13500, the i5 from Intel, they include a box cooler 
And that box cooler, I know for a fact that box cooler is just not going to do a good job of cooling down the i5-13500. So we're gonna be actually, after this video, we're gonna be making these cooler recommendations, but then we're gonna be going on to test out another CPU and why you should buy an aftermarket cooler, even if you're getting a CPU in 2023 that includes a box cooler. So if you wanna see that video as soon as it drops, do hit that sub button, ring that bell, but let's get on now to a conclusion with the four leftovers here and what you can expect for your money in 2023. So when all said and done, we've got here the four leftovers on the table, which depending on which cooler you look at is going to be extremely good value for money to just decent value for money. And the overall winners, you saw me sort of hinting at the MT4 before, this cooler was the winner years ago and now in 2023, it is still the go-to value for money cooler. It weighs in over 500 grams. The included fan is just simply phenomenal in terms of its cooling performance, its noise profile, the ease of installing this thing. They've also updated the bracket to include officially now LGA 1700 when you get it, as well as the cooler contact surface is extremely flat. So they've slightly improved this cooler over the years, which is actually really good to see as opposed to certain other brands in the not just the tech space, but all over the world. They seem to be uh, in this inflationary environment uh, giving you less for your money. So it's not good to see, but it's at least a decent thing to know that with the Snowman brand to adjust for inflation, they've just raised the price a little bit on this CPU cooler where it's now slightly over $20 as opposed to it before when it was released years ago, it was coming around $15 to $17 shipped to your door. So the Snowman has gone up in nominal prices, adjusted for inflation, it's pretty much the same price, but it's extremely good value for money. In my opinion, it is hands down the best value for money CPU cooler you can get brand new. Now that said, you've got here the BM6000. If you want a little bit more cooling performance out of your cooler, this is going to give you that, but it's also gonna come in with a higher cost as well as higher fan noise. So for me personally, I believe the MT4, if you wanted more cooling performance, just get the two fan edition of this, save some money and call it a day. The, the Johnsbo CR1400, I'm not gonna completely disown this in the video. It came in with a much smaller profile than the other coolers, even though it's more expensive than the MT4, it comes in with also some decent aesthetics. The noise profile is really good. So I know for a fact this will do a good job of cooling down those mid-range CPUs that aren't as power hungry as the i7-13700K, which if it mainstream desktop gaming CPUs, that's practically everything. The lastly here, we've got the Wavibo, comes in the all white aesthetic. So if you want something a little bit different looking to the other coolers here, this is definitely gonna provide that all white look to match your build. Now it does have good cooling performance, just like the MT4, pretty similar cooling performance, but it does have the RGB, it does have a few extras, and it does cost a little bit more, as well as coming in with what I feel like is an inferior fan to the MT4, though it was bearable, and it did do a pretty good job at the end of the day. So this one and the CR1400, as well as the BM6000, they get a situational recommendation, depending on your use case scenario, and then the MT4 just gets the overall winner of today's video, which I kind of was hoping there would be the new king on the block because this thing has been getting recommended here at Tech Air City for years, but it's good to see that the original Snowman was hard to beat. It means if you got one of these coolers all those years ago, I mean, you pretty much pat yourself on the back knowing that you got, not just then, some of the best value, but you've still got the best value CPU cooler to date. Anyhow, guys, if you have any questions or comments about these coolers in today's comparison, do drop a comment in the comments section below. And with that aside, I'll put the links in the description below if you want to check out any of these coolers. Well, actually, I'm not going to put the links for the Landshore and the and the Molten 400. I just don't recommend you, you do that to yourself. The links for these four CPU coolers here will be in the description below. With that aside, we've also got the question of the day, which comes from Swizy6250. And they ask, how many seconds do you have your stress test at because my PC crashes every time I click apply and test. So here they're talking about the Ryzen Master with the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. When we got the 7950X and we used Ryzen Master, we could click uh, apply and test and it would run 
pretty much for over an hour. That was uh, where I get the final stress test. When it runs over an hour, it's fine. But if you're clicking apply and test and your system's crashing straight away, that means you are quite far from having a stable clock. So you've definitely got to up your voltage there or lower your clock speed. Because sometimes, say for instance, you set a 5.2 gigahertz all core on the 7950X, there may be some really good examples of a 7950X that will do that, say even at 1.25 volt, but then you have a 7950X and it just won't go to 5.2 gigahertz, even if you feed it like 1.35 volt. So do keep in mind that clock speeds as well as voltage is really important with the 7950X. If you're copying the settings in my video, you may have to give it some more voltage since I was using a pretty good power supply and I was using a 420 mil water cooler. So those two factors, you may have to give it some more voltage. Though in terms of clicking apply and test and crashing straight away, you are far from stable. Hope that answers that question and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.